it's called Melon. This one's really sad. Right, well, let's clean it first. <laughs> That gives me chills. That is a sampling of our guest tonight here on Von Pod. Welcome to Von Pod. It's me, Kevin Von Esper. This is a conversation I've been wanting to have for, oh, probably about 20 years. Uh, so strap in. This is going to be 
I, as far as I know, the only long form interview that exists with Melissa R. Kaplan of Splashdown and Universal Hall Pass and a voice you may have heard, even if you don't know the name, we're going to get into it tonight. It's going to, this is going to be a fun one for me at least. Are you ready for Von Pod? Von Pod. Welcome to Von Pod. I've got chicken heads and deli creeps, scary monsters and super creeps on Von Pod. You're listening to Von Pod. With aliens and skunk dogs, I hope you're here to chat along to Von Pod. Hello, Melissa Kaplan. Hello, Kevin Bonasper. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Um, I guess I should tell a little bit of a personal story to get this started, because I got to inject a little bit of me into this story, right? Okay. Picture this. I'm at Audio Engineering Music College. It's my sophomore year. It's 2004. I'm about... I don't know, how old am I at that age? 19, 20 years old. I have a roommate who can reveal himself if he wants to, who used to work at a college radio station previous to this and said, dude, I got this CD that never got released. You have to listen to it. It's called Blue Shift by Splashdown. Oh, wow. Okay. And so he had the, the actual radio promo copy and it just blew my mind, and I've been obsessed with it ever since. And I don't think I've ever heard you do an interview like this before. Is that? I have, I've never ever done a long form interview um, by myself. Uh, usually, it was, any interviews were with Adam and Casson. So right. Yeah. So this is my first one. And even then, it would have been what over twenty years ago or something like that, probably. Yeah, it was ages ago. So, um, yeah, yeah. So I'm well, a little nervous, but <laughs> yeah, don't worry. I'm a little nervous too. But it's gonna this is gonna be a lot of fun. Um, I guess just to start this out, what is sort of your Reader's Digest history uh, in music or singing or or however you want to answer that up to the point where Splashtown was about to begin? Um, I mean, where did it all start? Where, yeah, how, like, were you in any bands before that? Like, what, you know, where did you so, come from? How did you get there? I guess the earliest would be um, when I was three and sitting underneath the piano and someone in my family was playing piano and then they would leave and then I would practice what they were doing. I would play by ear hmm. the best I could what they did. And that's how I started playing piano and then I think in elementary school I started writing poetry and then started putting the two together and became a songwriter um in and elementary then school? elementary school yeah um your first song <laughs> oh god um I do it was really cheesy um <laughs> I think it was called perfection or something like that oh, that's um, not, that's not as embarrassing as what I was writing about uh-oh. <laughs> Why, what were you writing about? Oh, I don't know. Janitors from outer space. Stuff like Well, that's that. pretty yeah. cool, though. That's like Tickle me Elmo kind of Frank um, Zappa-ish. You know? yeah. yeah, I guess so. It was, it's more like the Misfits meets Green Jelly, I guess. But <laughs> um, Then, I guess, um, once, you know, I'm, I was in a choir in elementary school, and then... Um, I think is this better, Kevin? Sorry, adjusting. I can't hear myself. Let me know if this is good. Thank you. Sorry. Oh, no worries. Um, uh, and when I got to high school, um, I originally wanted to be um, 
uh, an artist, like a visual artist. Um, and I found, I, I was found by one of the faculty members playing the piano in, in the, in the hall there. And he said, you should be studying music. So, um, that's further drove me into doing music. And then there was a tutoring program with, uh, Brown university and I wound up recording my first demo, which I think I sent you a picture of. Okay. Yes. Is it this? This was not on Discogs. Yes. No, that's not on Dis Discogs. No. Um, that was my first uh, demo that I recorded at, at um, Brown University Studios. And then um, I wound up for my senior project having my first band, which was called, wait for it, Tacky Wallpaper. Tacky um, Wallpaper. Wow. <laughs> Did you come yeah. up with that name? Oh, yeah, we came up with that name. Um, my mom, I love her, but she has very interesting taste in wallpaper. So, um, yeah. Um, what kind of music are these songs on this tape? Uh, the One of them is super poppy, and the other one is very, actually, a precursor to the sort of melancholic stuff that I've done. Um and uh, has, has anybody i mean do you still have this i i do still have this it is um just I, saying i have the capability to digitize things like this <laughs> just putting that out there to you or anybody who may be watching who has okay. tapes. um i actually did try to digitize it but um it only came out in mono hmm. so um I can i'm not that. the most technically uh sure. uh um, not, not, I'm a little green with technology sometimes. Well, I'd love um, to do it. If just putting that out there. You can... Okay. Well, thank you. I, I'll keep, I'll keep the offer in mind. Wait, so what um, was what was tacky wallpaper like? And did, um, did, did and did that band record anything? We didn't. Well, no, we just recorded the concert. Um, it was really just for my senior project, which was to write a bunch of songs and perform them, and and then that was that so it was putting on that concert and it was me and um my first ex-boyfriend that were doing it together so um and then gosh so this is in brown university was, in rhode island no well no, no this was in my school was right next door to brown oh. um and uh, so then. Um, oh wait, this is in high school still. This was in high school still. Okay, got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Yeah, and then we when I have, I didn't have a senior project when I was in high school, so that threw oh. me off a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, I went to like a little private school um, for high school, gotcha. um, and then I moved on to college, and I. I didn't go to Berkeley immediately because there was some protest in the family about um, going to music school. Mm. Um, and so I wound up going to Clark University for the first couple of years of school, even though that I was in Boston. Doing, where's that? That's in Worcester. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And um, I tried out for their a cappella group and did not make it in. Cool. Um, because the audition was just to sing I'm Stuck on Band-Aids and I had never auditioned for anything before and I had no idea what to do. So it was um, a little weird. Hmm. And then I wound up auditioning for their um, their big band and so I was in their big band. Um, I was the lead singer for their the Clark University big band for uh, I think a year. What, what kind um, of songs were you doing in there? Um, jazz, yeah, straight up jazz. <laughs> yeah, you know, big band music, swing, mm. blues kind of stuff. And then I uh, finally, uh, you know, went to battle with my family about going to music school and transferred to Berkeley, and then that's when I wound up meeting the people in Splashdown. 
Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and so, okay, I guess the history before Splashdown is um, sort of this band Siren Song. Yes. And that was kind of Splashdown before you got involved, right? Yeah, um, they ha they had that band, and um, I got my props. Here's my first prop here. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's a great album. Um, I haven't listened to it in a while. Yeah, no, Robinson has a beautiful voice. Mm -hmm. um, they had that band, but my, I was actually mm, there's a picture hidden behind the the tray. Did you know that? Uh, yes, that's I think. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't yeah, know. I never knew that before. Really cool artwork for Stevie. Oh, yeah. stuff. The best, the, the best artwork. I love Cynthia's stuff. We're um, gonna get into Cynthia's stuff. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, she's she's one of my favorite artists. Um, uh, I think for so. So here's the weird story of how I got in touch in contact with the Castle Von Bueller people. Yes, tell um, us the weird story. The weird story. I was actually looking for a ride to Vermont because um, my friend Cheryl um, was my roommate in uh, at Clark University, and she uh, she also wound up transferring out of there and went to UVM. And so I wanted to go visit her and I had asked this person just uh, who lived in my dorm, who was from Vermont and who had offered, Hey, you know, if you ever want to ride to visit your friend, um, you're welcome to come along. And so I called him out of the blue and asked him if he was going to Vermont anytime soon so I could see my friend. And I also asked him just aside, um, did he know anyone that needed a singer? Because um, when I was at Berkeley, I was just majoring in piano. I wasn't doing vocals um, and I wanted an outlet for my voice. So he said, I know someone that has an audition for um, a compilation that they're doing. And that was for the Anon compilation. And so I tried out and Cynthia had heard me in the other room. Yeah. <laughs> There this, it is. I gotta talk about this because it's so cool. I mean, isn't it amazing? Is so, it's you guys. You gotta. I gotta do like a little unboxing here of this because it's just whoever put this much care into the packaging for like an indie release. It's incredible. I know. I miss. I miss packaging. Yeah. Right. I know. Um, it's I okay. It's a double CD first of all, and each song has a complimentary postcard sort of piece of artwork it's crazy uh it's, remind me what song you're on here oh maybe think, a couple songs um oh my god i can't even remember the name of it um i think it was anon or is the name of, no it was feladai uh, chan feladai uh, chan okay gotcha. was the name of the, the group i think his name was thomas he was from england Okay. So I was gonna, gonna try to look up which picture it is. <laughs> look at these pieces of art. They're so cool. I know they're beautiful. And these are all different artists in the area and bands from the area. Yeah. Like, like, do you know the story behind how this happened? Um, well, I know that she was doing this to raise. Um, uh, awareness for about AIDS and HIV, and the, mo and the money would be donated to that. Right. I think I have some slides about that somewhere. I'll try to pull them up while we're talking. So, okay, so this was sort of the introduction. That was the introduction. And then um, Cynthia had a band called the Women of Sodom at the time. And uh... <laughs> I was going to get, I was going to get into that one later, but if you, maybe we, is that, the first step of the story because we could get into it now yeah that was the first step okay. of the story we I have a... <laughs> oh I gotta, yeah <laughs> i gotta introduct myself again here a little bit no Wait, worries. Hold on. let me get my um i guess we're gonna jump into woman of sodom first i was gonna save the salacious stuff for later but it's relevant <laughs> so here we go um so i was always a little punk rock and 
shock rocker, you know. Yeah. When I was growing up in the mid '90s. I was, you know, I loved my Guars and and you know Marilyn Manson was coming up and just yeah. anything that was like shock rock even like back the classic stuff even like screaming jay hawkins you know just the yeah. whole history alice cooper and so in my journey <laughs> of this kind of music i definitely came across woman of sodom and this was oh like in God. the mid 90s when you when it was active and years before i had ever heard of splashdown and in, then years before i had any idea there was any correlation between the two so when I found that out, my mind just about exploded. <laughs> yeah. Um, I used I don't... to like go check out the Woman of Saddam website and, you know, see what they're up to and stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't usually. Now please explain this. <laughs> yeah. I usually <laughs> don't project. talk about Women of Saddam. Not, yeah. not that I'm uh, embarrassed, but it's just, you know, I mean, I was just a backup singer. Right. Um, and so Cynthia had asked me if I would be a backup singer for her so that was an out uh, an outlet for me for my voice can you and, explain yeah what the project was and and was it did it exist um previously to you being involved like had it been it around did a while? yeah it did exist previously to my being involved um and uh, uh, uh i believe the premise was that women should be powerful in their sexuality and any anyone who has some weird sexual thing fetish or kink should be you know should own it kind of thing mm -hmm. um so i i think that's that was a, a reaction also to a band that they had been in previous to which they were treated as objects where now they were taking that and saying you know mm -hmm we're taking our power back kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, I'm the only one who is fully clothed. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it was, it was fun. We played in new Orleans. Um, that was crazy. Um, and we play, you know, we opened for Guar. Um, do you, okay. <laughs> we're going to do, crazy. we're going to do the overlap here. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Do you know about the other show that I do here? No, no, I know that I have seen that you had a lot of guar there. So yeah. what is there? You'll have to explain to me. Let me, I'll play the intro. We're going to have a little intro. Guar okay. pod comes from on guar pod. Guar pod. Guar pod. Guar pod. Yes, I do the same show, but with Guar people. Oh my God, that's awesome! Because they're like one of my favorite things in the world, and I'm just like, they I was put mad on that I didn't, to, I didn't. I was mad that I didn't get to make their documentary. So this is my contribution to that world. Oh wow! Well, that's really cool, and I'm and sure I, that you probably have a large fan base for that. Yeah, it's a little bit larger than for myself <laughs> so far, but I'll take it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. This is a comment I found on um, a Woman of Sodom YouTube video. Uh, it says, Woman of Sodom opened up for Chem Lab and Guar at Avalon in Boston years ago, and they blew me away. One of the best opening acts I've ever seen. Uh, yeah. So uh, tell me about was... playing with Guar. Oh, well, I mean, I didn't. I didn't get actually get wasn't one of the the women that got to oh. go up on stage with them, oh, but, okay. I, mean, but, but I mean I got a pretty up close and look at it and it was pretty amazing, but um yeah I mean that that was uh what definitely a highlight uh gig that we played, um we played Roseland's Ballroom which was also amazing, oh, wow. yeah I've, played, been there. I've seen Guar there actually. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. In New York, right? Yeah, we didn't mm -hmm. open for Guar though at Roselands. Okay. Um, uh, it was a pretty, pretty fun show um, to do. I mean, you know, she would actually find people in the area who had actual fetishes and invite them right. to be part of the show. 
And um, which I was... probably know a bunch of those people because I'm sort of in that scene here as well. I'm actually oh, going okay. to a big party called Torture Garden this weekend. <laughs> and it's something, yeah. it's a party that you would probably would have played back in the day, you know? Yeah, it was, um, I mean, again, I was just sort of like there to, 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 to sing. Yeah. Um, but my favorite part of the show was the opening where I would come out and sing a song and um, there was a belly dancer on stage, Sahar, and she would uh, sword dance. She would take out a sword and start dancing. Mm -hmm. And I would sing while she was doing it and I would pray that, you know, that I wouldn't get hit by the sword. Right. <laughs> and, um, you know, it was, it, it was a lot of fun. Or the whips or the animas and all that stuff. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I am the doctor. Um, but, <laughs> um, I have another prop. I actually have the CD. Yeah. I don't have the vinyl uh, seven inch, but um, yeah, it's a very, you know, I, I would like to see it with the visual component. I, you know, I've seen pictures, but who's got that archive of Women of Sodom stuff? Does Cynthia have all this that stuff? That would be Cynthia, yeah. I uh, You I'm, think she would come on this show? Because I'd love to talk to her. I have no idea. You, can, okay. you could reach out to her and I ask should, her. Yeah, I will. I am friends with her on Facebook. We have a lot of mutual friends because of our alternative scenes in New York City. I yeah. kind of follow what she does, you know, in her space up here and everything. But I haven't, haven't actually been myself yet. Oh, okay. Are you originally from New York? I mean, I always lived in the state, but I lived in the city area for like 15 years. Oh, gotcha. And I'm still okay. close by, so. Um, so anyways, uh, you have like a whole song on this CD pretty much, right? There, there. I, I was asked to do, um, to write a song, uh, full, a uh, full song, for it. I think it was uh, water sports. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, and there's a Tipper Gore mix. Remember when that was a joke? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I gotta be careful what I show from this booklet, uh, YouTube. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Water sports. Yeah, I don't know if I can play that one. I mean, show that one. <laughs> and and uh, your name in the band was Annika. Like, where did that come from? Um, Cynthia just wanted us to all to have all um alternative names, I and can so maybe close mine yeah, was Annika to report. Yeah. Um, something you know, Annika with the with the cheese last name. Mm-hmm. Okay, we talked about the women of Sodom. And uh, so that was another song actually on Anon. Boots was on here. Yes. So you're on a, at least two songs on this. No, I don't know if you're on that song, but the band was on here. Yeah. Yeah, Xavier Dietrich was the one that wrote most of the music for the women of Sodom. Gotcha. Um, and he was in a band called Sleep Chamber. Is, is that correct? I'm not sure. I can't say yes or no because I'm not sure. Um, but that, that was the band that they were in before the Women of Sodom started. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let, yeah, let's get back on track here. So you were taking this trip and you went to this audition. What happened? Um, so I was, na I was nabbed for being a backup singer for the Women of Sodom. And then um, I was introduced to Adam and Adam and I started writing Deserter. And um, he still had Siren Song. And I had no idea that he had planned to not do Siren Song um, after that. And then it, it just wound up to be Adam and I writing Deserter. And then he brought Kasson in. And Kasson went to Berkeley. And I actually didn't know that he went to Berkeley. <laughs> we mm. both went there at the same time. Um, so we actually met through Adam instead of school, uh, okay. which I thought was kind of funny. And um, that's how it started. So Deserter was the first song, huh? Yes. And then... Um... <laughs> And then Pandora, I think, was yeah. next. Yeah, I have my other prop here. This is a recent addition. Yeah. Um, oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah I wonder, is, is there any cool, like, anything etched into the side? Or, do you know? 
I no, so. we didn't. We didn't. We didn't get that cryptic. It's blue though. It matches my hair and my eyes. It does. It, it matches so your background. Yes, it's a blue it's theme blue over here. It's a blue color, ship. So. Oh, good. Me too. Obviously. Awesome. I don't know if you can see it in the light, but I got blue in my hair I this can week see again. It. Yeah, I can see it's, it. I'm back. I, I did it natural for a couple of years, and and I'm back to. You're back, back to blue. blue. Yes. Well, it looks good. I like it. Thank you. Um, tell me, is this a demo tape? Is this the same thing as this, but on tape or what? Yeah, this is exactly the same thing. This, but we, I think, um, uh, Cynthia had wanted to be sort of kitschy and, you know, give, give out cassettes to clubs to listen to so that we could get gigs. So mm -hmm. she made a bunch of those and passed them out. And she kind of became like the manager of the band and, and everything, yeah. right? She was uh, she was a tour de force. Uh, was was she? Um, Adam and her were married. At, was that at this point? At the or? time, yes, okay. they were. And he was playing in bl black tape for a blue girl as well. Do you know um, anything about that? I don't know that I don't, um, but it's very possible. Yeah, because I actually have some friends. Um, who were in that band as well later on. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. And that, so that's basically how Splashdown started. And and then we wound up going to, um, I think it was Sonic Studio, and we recorded everything there. And um, yes, that was, was that. Would you consider um, Splashdown was more like a studio project first? Definitely. It was definitely a studio project first. And then we started, we never, that was my one regret with Splashdown is that we didn't play live as much as I had, had hoped we would. Yeah, I was going to ask about that because it seems like live was like a whole different animal. Like you'd have to build up a band to do it. Um, yeah. And, and like how many, how often would that happen, you know, compared to being in the studio? I think we played out like maybe once or twice a month. Oh, that's not that bad. Yeah, and that's um, more than I would expect. Yeah, I mean, I, I I had hoped that we would have played more often, mm -hmm. um, uh, just because I tended at the time to write um, melodies that were more difficult than what my skill set was, if that makes any sense. Sure. So it was almost like a challenge for me to learn how to sing my own material. Mm -hmm. he, uh, Cassin's here? Is this Cassin? Holy moly, I've never seen that tape before. I never knew it existed. Wow, we're blowing the band's mind here. What? Oh, is that, yeah. Is that him? Yeah, that's, that is him. Yeah. We got... Wow, we got two of the members, two out of the three members of Splashdown in the house right now. Uh, and I, I see your comments. We're gonna, I'm gonna get to them. Don't worry. Um, so was it always the same people in the live band, or was it just like different show to show, or how? Um, and how, how um, did it like translate? Do you think? Oh my gosh. Um, well, we went through a bunch of drummers. I know that. Yeah, that's um, you and every band. <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, we also had um, a couple of different bassists. Um, I had my roommate from uh, Berkeley playing bass for a little while, and then we switched to a Canadian bassist uh, named Trevor Shand, who now does a show. Uh, I think he does something similar to what you do, a podcast about... Okay. Uh, um interviewing people who are in horror films and stuff oh, and anything halloween nice. oriented or well, when my documentary you know. comes out maybe i can be on his show <laughs> um so yeah um we did we did go through some some members but um it wasn't you know uh yeah see there's laurel in there um and uh we did do uh like you know it wasn't we didn't kick people out it wasn't like a revolving door constantly mm -hmm. so we kept them for a little while and then if it wasn't or if it wasn't working it wasn't working or if it wasn't working for them or 
you know sure. being in a band is hard <laughs> it's like a lot of schedule and, you and know, that and... was very challenging for especially from the drummers end um sure. because they had so they to play to 10 other bands track. right what's that's that true. so they have 10 other bands that's <laughs> exactly um and yeah, they had to... also to the i was going to ask like um about the technology because it's a very much an electronic sort of sound in the studio um, of course, you have live drums on stage. Um, I guess first, what do you know? Like, what kind of technology you were using? I, I imagine you couldn't just open up a program on your computer and program drums like you can now. Maybe uh, Cassie. Well, can chime I think in on there. stage. You mean for on stage? Either or. I mean, I, I imagine in the studio first, and then how that translates to the stage. Well, I know in the studio. I think um, Cassin was using Reason. And okay. um, uh, a whole bunch of other stuff, and um, uh, I think that on stage he brought um, his own mixer, so that Smart. everyone would have their levels. You know, like uh, eventually I wound up having to wear um, uh, what do you call it? Um, in in the ear monitor yeah. system, right? Because in some spaces the sounds from his keyboards were too airy and it would be hard for me to find you know where the pitch was yeah so, right yeah um i would need a guide in my ear in my uh in my ear so that i could hear um i, I lost a lot of hearing from that mm. but um sorry and, yeah, sorry uh it was worth it and um yeah, yeah so um eventually that's what happened is that he wound up bringing a full mixer on and everyone had, you know, their, I had my the in the ear monitor and system and everyone else right. was, you know, I, I think the drummer, I'm not sure what the drummer used. I imagine he had also had the same thing for his click track. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, was there like a generally at, at you know, once, you found, I don't know how I'm, I'm gonna ask this question. Was there like a producer that was consistent with the band? Cause it does sound pretty consistent on record. Um, it was all three of us. Uh, mm -hmm. We were all the producer really. I mean, right. Kasten was a, is, it, it was a huge, you know, I would say the, the electronic producer of right. everything. Mm -hmm. And I was just a singer songwriter and Adam is a, a, also a songwriter. Um, was there like um, a, um, a um, method that you wrote songs in that band? Cause it's interesting uh, when you sent me that Universal Hall Pass show that we played a song from at the beginning. Um, it was the first time I ever heard any of the Splashdown songs like deconstructed into just piano voice it's hard to listen to the CD and think like, how did this song start? You know, was there it, like a method to it? Yeah. Well, and this is something that Adam also was very, um, uh, n n not to, you know, make a pun, but adamant about was okay. um, that he, you know, we didn't want to write a song unless you could play it on guitar, unless you could break it down onto a guitar right. or piano. We didn't just want it to be, you know, some kind of hook that repeated over and over and over again. I want to hear the acoustic version of Sugar High, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's hard to imagine, but I bet you you could do it. That would be interesting. Now, that was actually producer-driven. That was... Mm. Um, the, I that got was, it. I knew it. <laughs> that, was, that was our Capitol Records saying, we need we need a hit. We need a, oh, you really? know, we, we need something. And it was funny for yeah. that song. I didn't know what to, um, you know, I was like, well, people usually write songs about sex or love or both. And so I was looking at a box of O's that was on the kitchen table at Adams. And I said, that's it. Sugar high. So nice. That was the inspiration for Sugar High. It was the "We Need a Hit" song, the you know poppy, hook driven. I I guess that's a good segue. Should we start talking about Capitol Records? 
Um, sure. <laughs> you know we got to get into it, right? <laughs> yeah, we do. I know well, I am how... going to make a preface that a lot of stuff that went on behind the scenes, I was uh, shielded from some of it. So mm. I don't know everything, okay. but I'll, I'll answer those as best as I can. Uh, sure. Well, I guess, how did that happen? <laughs> well, I guess we kind of skipped through, you know, some stuff you did. You put out um, Stars and Garters, right? Yeah, Stars and, and Garters then, was our first album. Uh, which one is this? This is Half World. Is that yeah. also pre-capital? Yeah, those two were pre-capital. And then, and then, then I guess the only then, official thing you put out on Capital was this red redshift, right? Yeah, redshift. Okay, so yeah, tell us about Capital Records. Um, well, Cynthia had been shopping for labels, and um, we were being courted by, I think, MCA and. Then we wound up on Capital, um, but we're also on a, another subsidiary, which was Java Records. Oh, okay, yeah, right, Java. Now Java was on the twelfth floor of Capital, and it was um, a new thing. I guess they were trying out where Glenn Ballard would have his own um, imprint, and. Um, that so we were on both labels mm -hmm. if that makes any sense yeah sure there's always that happened a lot especially in the 90s yeah subsidiaries of such and such yeah and he had glenn had wanted to take the reins on our project um but it wound up being more like um we we were pretty much left to our own de devices we did um we did write a song with him called, uh, oh, what was it called? Oh, I understand. Um, yeah, that was, we'll talk about that for sure. That was, that was, a, a, a he had a lot of hands on in that one. And then, um, he suggested for the soundtrack of, uh, Titan AE that yes. we write a song about Karma. Yeah, just was just talking about that yeah but yeah. that wasn't that wasn't on the record right no that was just on the soundtrack right. of uh, of the for that film mm -hmm. so um yeah it was it was exciting it was stressful and exciting all at once if that makes any sense yeah i bet i mean do you remember actually i i don't know what you're doing in these pictures is this when you actually went to go sign the contract um, the contract, I think, had already been signed, and this is when we were going to. They what we flew out to California for six months. They put us up in the Oakwoods, and wow. uh, yeah, it was uh, it was interesting. We stayed there. They had like the Murphy beds. <laughs> the rockstar so was, experience. Uh, yeah, it was a very very bizarre experience, and um, uh we stayed there and we recorded it at Capitol for um, I can't remember how many months. And then uh, we wound up having to go to um, another studio in Glendale called front page and um, to finish the album. Cause it was taking a long time. And um, later on. <laughs> Hi Jeff yeah. Foster. Oh, um, I'll put it up. Yeah. And then um, while we were at Front Page Studios, uh, well, actually, I don't know. Actually, before that, the Titan AE thing was how I got into the the film stuff, mm -hmm. um, where um, Graham Ravel was doing the score. And he had sort of heard that middle eastern tinge of my voice in karma slave and asked if i would do some score singing and that was my first um mm. score singing you know and, how i know graham Ravel, not personally but um he worked a bit in the 90s with one of my other favorite artists buckethead oh yeah oh my god yep uh i, so I, I have a couple of his scores on cd Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, so no, he's the last father of industrial about. music. Nice. So it was an honor to work with him. And um, 
I worked on a couple of other things with him after that. Right. And then when we were at Front Page Studios, they were doing k pax and they needed a, a singer, and I just happened to be there. So nice. I got to do that. And then that's what started me doing the film scores. Mm-hmm. Um, well, before, a happy we, accident. before we get too into the film stuff, which is interesting in its own respect, I want to know more about Blue Shift and why did this album not come out? What happened? What's the story? Uh, it's... That's the meat of this whole story, right? It is. So, um, because that is the tragedy in my mind. I mean, that I feel like is one of the most perfect records I've ever heard. Oh, thank you. Um, I thank you very much. The is this actually going to be the cover art? That was going to be the cover, yeah. Um, so here's what I know. Um, This is what I know is that um, the original president of Capitol when we got there was Gary Gersh. And he was like, I think the manager for Nirvana or something. Okay. And he really liked Splashdown. And then he was fired and they hired a lawyer named Roy Lott. And he wanted to change everything to a different sound. He wanted more R&B stuff. He wanted Mm. different sounds. So we were off the roster. And then there was some push and pull with Java. I think Java had wanted to keep us on. But I don't know that Java, we didn't, we weren't confident that Java was going to remain an imprint on capital for very long so we wanted out of our contract um and you can ask my other bandmates to because they are probably might want to correct me on this but this is my understanding of what happened and there was a lot of behind the scenes stuff that i was not um that i wasn't let in on i guess so i guess who owns this album now? Do they still Capital own it? Owns it? Yeah, they. And it's they, like I mean, it's been about tw- almost twenty three years. Twenty three. Almost twenty three yeah, years. I guess the, yeah. it was two thousand. Is there two thousand um, one? Is there like something in the contract where you you know, after a certain amount of time, the re- rights revert back to the band? That would be nice. Um, <laughs> yeah, it would. I want to see. I want you know. That would I want be really this on nice. Vinyl. I know. Oh yeah, that would be fantastic. Um, no, um, if if we w- want our album back, we would have to purchase it from them, and that would, you know, be a lot of an amount that we can't really afford. Right. So yeah, well, we'll talk about money and music in a little bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the two are like oil and water. Yeah. Um, God, I mean, it's such a tragedy. Uh, I, I don't even know what to say about it. Um, what do I want to ask you? Um, I guess what a, now in the age of streaming, why don't they just put it out now? Is there any like contact with them or like push for this or demand, you know? Well, like, I don't even know if they like, know it exists. They can anymore. just drop that shit on Spotify and be done with it, you know? And at least it'll be available. The, I, they own it. Why are they I not doing anything with it? You. Um, Somebody I can, talk to Capitol Records. I, they probably have a vault of unreleased stuff that. I they, bet. That are the of bands that went through the same thing that we went through, and I, yeah, I I would think it would be extra revenue for them. Yeah, why not, right? You I know, mean, some of the songs are on Spotify because Redshift is on there. During the frustration, the is getting point zero 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 six right. cents per right. stream. I know. <laughs> I know. Actually, they probably get more. I think that they they, they do. They probably make more. You would make yeah. More crap. No, yeah. exactly. But would you like? Would you want it out? I mean, it's out there. Obviously, you can find it. it yeah. Would Would you want it to be officially released? Because I, as a fan, I mean, 
Yeah, I would love. I feel for like there's enough of us out there where like a limited release would be successful. I think so too. I I think I mean I would love for it to to be given life. We put so much work into it. I mean, it God, we put like so it, much yeah. work into it. Yeah. So okay, I'm I'm guessing Sugar High was going to be the single, right? Um, I not sure okay. actually. I don't, I don't know that we got that far. Huh. Um, because there's but, a bunch uh, of remixes of it, and it's just like, like you said, it's like the obvious pop. Yeah, you know, like. I think that also Iron Spy was a big. Um, when Gary was the president, he really loved that song. I heard a rumor that somebody didn't want to put that on the record, like it was almost taken off. Really? Is that something that was ever talked about? No. Oh, I think okay. that's just a rumor. Oh, interesting. I'm, I'm, Are there I'm any other interesting rumors rumor. about Splashdown that you've heard about? <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't. I I try not to listen to rumors. That's fair. Um, so I'm, I guess my next question, you probably don't have an answer for either, but like, was there ever thoughts about like what the music video was going to be and like all that kind of stuff that is, was be attached to the record? We never really got that far. I mean, it was it was di difficult enough to get, mm -hmm. you know, good band pictures. Um, they yes, had. Where, where, been... where was I when you needed me back then? Well, I was like ten years old. But... <laughs> well, we had. It was funny because these pictures were taken. They there was you know a huge budget taken out for this, and I, I think we were. You're like, where's not, all? Where did the money go? <laughs> we were not pleased with the with the fact that there was a huge budget taken out for that um, photo shoot. We wound up using the photos, um, the photo that you used on the cover of mm -hmm. your uh, promo for this. Yeah, those were taken for free by a friend of Cynthia's, and they were beautiful. Yeah, I'm sure and, Cynthia has some very talented friends. Yeah, and these pictures were taken by um, a thirty thousand dollar photographer. So damn, there was so that. much money in the record industry back then. What yeah, happened? thirty we were, grand for some photos. Well, we were we we were not pleased that they were spending that much on photos. Um, right. So well, because we we did want to have a certain amount of control over budget. Mm -hmm. So, and that but, was um, not something that we would have poured that much into did you have like thoughts about your image or anything like that or was this this was it that i think at the time i mean i look back on some of that stuff and i'm like god what was i thinking uh -huh. i was totally finding myself i had no idea what i wanted to look like i didn't you know i i, I was just experimenting and i think the uh -huh. same was true of i think my other band members we just were and we're all very different too, which was hard to get all three of us in one picture to right. look uniform. Yeah. Um, so I think. You had some uh, interesting jackets and things like that. I saw. Yeah. Where, yeah, where did definitely. that come from? What, um, what was the inspiration of those? Let's see if I can. Oh, well, I know that Cassin really likes um, complicated clothing. Uh -huh. <laughs> we'll see just stuff with like complicated buckles and stuff like that. Um, I don't know if his tastes have changed, but he went from t-shirts to the complicated clothing. Um, and uh, those jackets. Yeah, that was my the the comf that was actually I think Cassin gave that to me. Mm. Um, and yeah, I mean, I had no idea what what to wear. You know, I knew that I had to sort of draw the draw the eye in some way. Um, but you got, I also some, you got some cool tight pants though. Uh, yeah, those are those are my shiny pants. My yeah, 90, you got some cool shiny pants. <laughs> my '90s shiny pants. You could wear those um, in Women of Sodom too, probably. I know. I actually have a bag um, in my. Uh, uh, I I just moved recently, so I actually have this bag full of all of my old band clothes, Ooh. and I don't know what to do with them. Like. Uh, uh, oh, no, shoot. Of, <laughs> I know, right? I and come down with my camera. Let's do it. Nostalgia. Um, and so, um, yeah, I 
I have no idea, you know, what we were going uh, for image wise. We, so yeah, go which, ahead. Which was also sort of like the music. I mean, the music was all over the map really when you think about it. It was, um, but it did sound consistent when it was put together. Exactly. Probably your voice was a big glue to that. Yeah. So I think that that was something that we were just a band that was just, you know, finding ourselves and at the time, which also yeah. probably lent itself to us getting kicked off of Capitol because we weren't defined. Mm -hmm, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so what, I mean, I'm guessing Splashtown didn't last very long after that. What happened? No. There? Um, well, Kasson had started up Freeze Pop. And um, I actually filmed Freeze Pop once. I'm not sure if he was there. At, was he always in that band? Maybe he's still here to answer that. Um, I actually filmed Freeze Pop once at a party in New York. Is uh, I he was in that band for a long time. We started it, and then um, he left. I know that okay. he left. Yeah, I don't think he was there because I feel like I would have been really excited to meet him if he was. But I did film awesome. Freeze Pop once <laughs> for for a job. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, um, yeah, Sitting no, in a box then... somewhere or on a hard drive. Nobody's ever seen it. Oh no! Well, maybe you can interview him yeah, for that. Maybe, yeah, that would be um, really cool. <laughs> uh, um, so he was starting that, and. Oh yeah, he was starting that and then I was working with Adam and there was a lot of tension between us at the time and I just needed a break and decided to start Universal Hall Pass mm -hmm. and just go on my own. And I think one of, as much as I love Splashdown, one of the frustrations I had with it was that Kasson and Adam would come up with um, backing tracks for songs faster than I could write the lyrics to them. So I wasn't getting to write as much music as I would have liked. And I, you know, I had gone to school to be a composition major. And was there a lot of splashdown ideas that never got finished? Um, there, there were a couple of things that didn't get finished, but um, I'm supposed to only be cryptic and say that mm -hmm. they might be finished. Ooh. after 23 years so that's all i can say uh you heard it here first <laughs> um I, i'm not allowed to come out and say that, anything that's, so that's fair be cryptic be mysterious we like that <laughs> all right uh, what what was it like playing the lilith fair oh my <laughs> did god did you do the whole tour or was it just like one or a couple shows we did i think we did two i think we did three shows three i want to say i don't know how many shows it was more than two um it was fun um it was fun it was stressful and fun all at the same time um it, it was amazing at the end of the night um i got to go on stage and sing with you know people like sarah mclaughlin and cheryl crow and chrissy hind wow. um, oh is that i had a picture i think maybe that was what it was is that the bear hat picture <laughs> Is that what this is? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a bear hat? I didn't even notice that until you said it. That's yeah. Uh, at the time, Kasson's girlfriend was making um, uh, animal hats. So yeah. we were we were promoting them on stage for... Hey, why not? There's your image. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Dancing uh, bear. What, what song were you singing? You um, oh, my God. Was it a uh, Sarah McLachlan song? No, it was, um, she picked a song for the end of it and I can't remember the name of it. Um, I'll probably Someone remember. in the comments, uh, go look it up. What was this, uh, 1990 something? Do you remember? It was either 1999 or the 2000. Yeah, so if someone could look that up, that'd be cool to, to know. Um, yeah. yeah that it was amazing to 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 do be um in front of such huge crowds right were those i guess here's man cameras were not the same as they were 
are today, guys. You know, <laughs> you get pictures like this and you'd be happy about it, okay? Yeah, the, the, it's not washed out like a digital. Right. Yeah. Um, and there was some other festivals I see that you played. Is this Lola Fair or is this something else? Um, I think that looks like Lilac Festival in Rochester, New York. Right. So, okay. I wanted to touch on that because that's the only video that's out there of Splashdown playing live is at this festival. Yeah. You remembered that? And where's all the videos? Someone's got to have Splashdown videos, right? Yeah, well, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I they know do. cameras, again, that you'd have to have a big VHS camera, but like, does, do, does the Splashdown archive exist somewhere? No, we, I don't think that we, we, we had any, we didn't, we never really filmed our shows. Oh, you're breaking my heart. What about soundboard recordings and stuff like that? I'm like such um, a nerd about things like this. I don't think that we have any soundboard recordings, so I'm sorry. <laughs> There's one other video. Oh, let me know about it. Um, I'd love to see it. Um, I guess we could play this while we're talking a little bit. Have you seen this in a long time? I I I have. I I am. I cringe when I see. Oh really? These. Should I not yeah. play it? Um. I mean, I'm. I, Here's one I, of those jackets. I know. <laughs> Um, were you happy with the live band? I mean, it's it's such a different experience than listening to the CD. It is, but I feel like my voice was still developing at the time. You know, I was still getting used to singing live in that setting. Mm -hmm. And I don't. I feel like right before um, Catherine left for uh, Freeze Pop, Freeze Pop is when I really started coming into my own voice fully. So that brings us into Universal Hall Pass. Did you start that immediately after Splashdown? Um, no, I, I, I wanted. I knew I knew I wanted to do something solo and get back into songwriting on my own. Mm -hmm. And um, then I, I just sort of came up with that name, and then I guess it never really took off because I've just had life things interrupting, but. Um, I mean, I'm still. I still have songs that I'm working on for it. Yeah, I'll. I'll definitely touch on that. Um, I guess. Let's see. Let's skip into the Universal Hall Pass. The first thing you released was, I believe, this guy, Mercury. Yeah, Mercury. See, somebody buys. Somebody buys music. It's just Thank me. You. I'm the only I one. That. Thank you for buying that. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, was the, uh, this was like the first thing you did. That was the first thing I did. Um, it was co-produced with someone, and um, then uh, we did another one with Casson, which was um, subtle things. Subtle things. Yeah, I have that one too. Yeah, and uh, I have. Well, I don't know what's something's blacked out on the back of my CD here. I don't. It's yeah, very mysterious. Was, uh, what's up with that? That's that's a story of a whole other story that I don't Is really want. Like wanna... that Beatles record where you have to peel the cover off and there's like surprise underneath. <laughs> yeah, right. There's a cracker. I never tried to do um, it, but um, I don't want to. Uh, no, that was just for tax purposes. Um, uh -huh. when I split with the label that I was on, Sneaky Records. Um, when I split with them, they they unwrapped all of my CDs and blacked out all of the the barcodes hmm. for tax purposes so don't ask all right. um, so it's not even that interesting yeah so mm -hmm. um uh anyway um i still have tons of of hard copy cds if anyone wants to order Yo, one <laughs> get a physical product it's cool you can open it up you can read the credits you can look at the pictures it's a whole thing. It's like a whole experience. You know, I, I love it because I still have um, a CD player in my car. That's where I listen to most of my music. So oh, I very cool. used to dig through all my old CD collections. Oh, very nice. Well, um, I, I'm, thank you for owning them. I appreciate sure, that. Of course. I got it. And then, you know, 
I always wanted to need something to do with my things. So it's a good uh, to to have guests on to talk about the things that I have that nobody else would want to talk about, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, I guess I do want to ask you about some songs. I kind of skipped over that in the Splashdown um, era, but let's see here. There's a couple songs that really catch my interest that I'm curious about. One okay. of the, I guess the first one is we're, we're rewinding a little bit. Doing that like, the, uh, what was that, Wayne's World? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Ha is a very interesting song. <laughs> is that, it is. was about a roommate? Is that what you said? No, that was just about my, uh, my, uh, my temperament and how I was sort of all over the place and trying to find myself. Gotcha. I guess um, I want to know, is there a, maybe, maybe this is more relevant now than back then, but is there a certain like themes to the lyrics that you write and the songs, how you present? Um, I think each song is different. Each song is, is totally um okay. yeah i mean i i, I think during we love a good time, concept record you know here it, yeah it, no, it's hard no. to tell with the universal hall pass stuff seems so like uh, kind of out there and, and spacey and stuff yeah um i i'm a, i'm a lover of very spacey sounding stuff headphone mm -hmm. headphone wear um i like i like the headphones and yeah. having things just sort of take me out of my body when I'm listening to music, you know, like sure. I'm floating among the stars. Um, that's that's kind of stuff that I like. Um, so we did talk about Sugar High. I know I did. Yeah, bring yeah. That one up. Sugar that's High like was, <laughs> was that's inspired by a box of O's uh, by some sugary cereal, um, and I, I, you know, gave it a sexual spin so that it would be popular. Right. Um, <laughs> uh and we can still make the music video the, yeah i <laughs> um we can have ai make it yeah How exactly see the record yeah. company would probably like that <laughs> that's, no uh, it, it, that's exactly right i was just about to say that um, um, what about this one? This seems like a quirky one, and I'm wondering um, how you feel about it now. Uh, procreation chick. Oh, um, that was when I was. Oh God, that song was sort of like a joke. Um, mm. I was watching. I was on the T, and I was. This woman was just overly strutting down the street, like she owned this, like she owned it, you know. And um, but it was just so over the top and silly that I just decided to write a song about it because it, it just seemed silly to me at the time. And mm -hmm. I, it really doesn't bear any relevance to me anymore. It's, it's a fun one. It's upbeat. It's very upbeat. And yeah, I, I meant know. it to be fun. Snarkly, if, snarkly silly. is the word I'm looking for. And yeah, it, that's exactly it's it was meant to be just funny and silly of nothing you know i'm not trying to make any major statements gotcha yeah uh, and then we did mention a little bit about i understand but this was like a late addition to the record right like it originally wasn't even on gonna be on the record is that what yeah, i understand about it i think that they pun. wanted yeah it was i think that they they wanted a song that was more universally appealing you know like well you know what catchphrase is is universally appealing so i um glenn ballard came up with i understand and then i just wrote the lyrics from there i mean it is a hit it could have been a major hit i'm saying you know i think the whole every song on this album could have been a hit but sugar high and i understand definitely i feel what could have hit the masses yeah yeah it was um i mean it's definitely you know has that universal appeal mm -hmm. um i guess before we get back into the universal hall pass this was sort of like the goodbye to splashdown the possibilities yeah kind of like um, all the remixes and b-sides and everything collected together what's the story yeah. behind this um i think that was just a way of saying 
you know, that that was just possibilities. Maybe I think at the time when it was put out that maybe there was a possibility that we would get back together or mm -hmm. these are the possibilities that may have happened. I mean, I think that's really pretty self-explanatory in, in the, yeah. in the, in the title. Um, I think and this was just kind of like available through you guys would just kind of throw it in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, what about a charming spell? Oh, a charming spell was actually originally supposed to be the theme song to charmed. No kidding. Yeah, so they Whoa. were asking us if we would write the theme song to Charmed, and they wound up going with something else that sounded like How Soon Is Now. Um, yeah, right, right, right. But um, uh, but it actually did wind up in the show um, for one of the episodes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a so you that wow you actually wrote that specifically for the show. Yeah. That's so that, so that was cool. actually really fun. That's one of my what favorite. Oh man, like it's like a comedy of errors with you guys. I know. I it was well. I don't know. It's just <laughs> wasn't meant to be. I, I guess. guess. Um, and we have another request for about Trophy Hunter. Oh, Trophy Hunter. I guess is just about you know. I I guess I was just writing about people who use other people for sex, and they don't. You know, they don't commit type mm -hmm. of people um okay now i want to skip back to the universal hall pass stuff what is a tutelary genius and why is that song so good ah a tutelary genius um i think it's i mean like you start this album with son of a bitch that's awesome <laughs> um the song is about um wanting to you know to succeed and to to not get in my own way gotcha. basically um and which i often do so that that was what that song is about hey it's important to be self-aware yeah and a tutelary genius is kind of like uh a sentry or a sentinel that sort of guides you i got to admit i've never heard the word before uh listening to this <laughs> tutelary I'm gonna start <laughs> using that in my vocabulary. <laughs> um, okay, I got it. Put out gotta, a party. Yeah, exactly. That's my party trick. That's so tutelary. <laughs> I don't even know if that makes sense, but it sounds great. I gotta ask about Katrina Josephina because that is like one of the most unique songs I've ever heard, and it sounds so timeless, but also like from the future or something. What is the story behind that? Um, that is about, um, awareness, like your, your awareness and your, it's, it's about, it's, how can I explain this? It's kind of like, um, when you're worrying about the future and you sort of send your awareness there, um, and Katrina Josephina is that part of you that's, that's like, uh, almost like a sentry she, or a scout you know, uh, also kind of like your body awareness, um, like. So it's you know, a part of yourself. It's a part of yourself that is that part of yourself where it's, you know, how your body will know, know that there's a threat when you right, don't sure. not even looking at something. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that. Um, and sending that out into the, into the unknown to, clear the way for you um that's what katrina josephina is it is, sounds like a like a fairy tale but like i don't know it it's, it's um, kind of like making i tried to make it into a fairy tale see, sort of I'm, i want to hope i don't get in trouble what's that i just wanted to play a little bit of it just to show um, people how unique it is i hope Hey, if we get shut down, give it a second, we'll come back. That's hopefully we won't get flagged by the U YouTube algorithm. Did you like come up with this song a cappella? Yeah, I did. I had a four track that I was working on and I just came up with it. Um, I was inspired by the, you know, the old 
Disney coral sound they have, mm. like the really old with their drenched and reverb. And I love that sound, and I wanted to include that in in this kind of kind of thing. I mean, this is so cool. It's just so unique. I've never heard anything like it quite. And then the ending, of course, gets like all crazy. Like all spacey and stuff. What is this backwards? Is this you singing backwards? Yeah, we took um, the, the my co-producer took the, the part of the song and then flipped it backwards. Awesome. If you guys haven't heard this record, you got to go check it out. On Bandcamp, go buy it on Bandcamp. Yeah, it's on Bandcamp. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, that one time on Bandcamp. That one, yes, that's your next record. Um, what's yes? I guess we can skip to like the last thing you put out. I believe. Well, you put out a couple songs on Bandcamp, but the last full release was Subtle Things, and this was 2006. What's going on? Yeah. Where's the new Universal Hall Pass? Oh, I know. Um, I've it's been a long journey. I've had a lot of life stuff going on, and um, I have songs. I mean, I released uh, two songs, um, Sin Eater and Lyra. Yes. And I have t three other songs in the making. Um, I had one with a producer that I found on Sound Better, but I um. I don't think that he quite gets the song, mm. so I am going to use some of the production that he did on it, and then I'm going to, I mean, I, I produced most of the song. Right. But what I'm do you gonna, use? Uh, what program do you use to record these days? Uh, Pro Tools. Okay. Old yeah. school Pro Tools. Pro I'm using Tools. Logic mostly. Ah, uh, okay. That's all right. It does a good program I've here. Yeah. I've so I hear. Um, and, uh, yeah um it's just and also just the expense of life has, has right yeah do we want to talk about um the relationship between putting out the scale between putting out music and um cost of putting out music yeah the cost of putting out music i mean it mixing does. and mastering yeah. Uh, hiring musicians, hiring string players, hi hiring, you know, the guy on Soundpetter was what thirteen hundred dollars oh. just to get some drums and and some wow. and and a couple of sounds in the chorus that I didn't have the skill set for. Um, I try hey, and do. Do you ever need a collaborator or a bass player or someone to <laughs> remix your stuff? Send it to me. Oh, okay. Are you? Do you play the bass? Yeah, that's my primary instrument. Oh, very cool. But very I, in the studio, I do everything as well, you know. Okay. All right. So trains. you do your own. Uh, uh, now, did you make the theme songs? Yeah, that was all me. I love that. The, those yeah, are really was, cool. I mean, I probably made that in a, like a couple hours at the most. Wow. Yeah. Well, they sound great. Thank you. Yeah. Stay tuned, guys. I have like so much music that's going to be coming out in the next hopefully year or two. Oh my God, like hundreds of songs is just backed up. So uh, that's my little plug for myself here. Here's my little plug. Go to Bandcamp and buy my record, Welcome to My Pity Party, or just listen to it there. But, <laughs> um, but the CD has some exclusive mixes on it. Although I don't know if I'm selling it anymore. Hit me well, up in the DMs if you want one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's that's the future. Um, should we ex be expecting anything anytime soon? And um, do you ever play live? I guess that was another question. No, was that the last I, show that you did that we were playing at the? Beginning? That was the last show that I did. Um, I mean, I did do I did do a that's couple like of over uh, orchestral years. concerts for video game film video game uh in is, is that think, what um is that what this is? yeah where are you in this picture um i think there's an arrow pointing to me oh oh okay yes i see you now gotcha. yeah i'm i'm sort of near the banana and super yeah. mario why is <laughs> why is there a banana <laughs> there you are. It, was, it was a halloween concert so okay. yeah um so everyone in the orchestra dressed up for Halloween. 
Um, and we did, you know, like Halloween type th themed stuff. Um, it was really fun. And um, so that was the last live show that I had. And then just my living situation doesn't allow me all the time to practice as much as I'd like to. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I just sort of given up on it because the requirements, I mean, just getting the music, the, just getting the material out there first right. has been such a challenge that doing live stuff. But is, you would like to in the future, if, if it was a possibility. If it was a possibility. It's not a lack of not wanting to be on stage. No, it's not a lack okay. of that at all. No. Let's get you back on stage. Oh, yeah. Oh. That, I've, uh, we'll figure that one out. Some, uh, but I, I, I first just want to put material out. Sure. So, uh, all right. Let's let me get let me catch up on some of these comments and questions. I know I've been ignoring some of them. I wanted to do a little bit of a flow here, and then I'll ask some overarching questions, and then we'll we'll start landing this plane here. Okay. Um, Thanks. So, people want to know about the Assassin's Creed. See, okay, the, your post, your your like video game and and soundtrack stuff. I'm I have a little bit of a blind spot. I've heard some of it, but I don't know as much about it as the band. So, what what do we need to know about that? And is oh, Assassin's um, Creed probably like the thing people know you the most for at this point? Yeah, I would say that people know me the most for Assassin's Creed. Um. I mean, I guess you could go on my IMDb. I have an IMDb mm -hmm. page. I probably should have sent that to you. It's a list of I all of the stuff it. that I've done. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of it on Spotify, too, if you just click your name. Yeah. Um, so Assassin's Creed was, I guess, one of the most popular ones that I've done, especially Assassin's Creed 2. I sang on the first one. I did some sort of Middle Eastern vocals for the first one. And then I wound up doing um, the second one, the third one, um, and the a little bit of the fourth one, and then some Valhalla. But the most popular song, I think, is Ezio's Family. I I, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> That's that. Yeah, that one's the. It's a. It's sort of like the became the theme for the whole game gotcha so i don't i kind of stopped at super nintendo so it's a little bit of a blind spot for me do you, <laughs> actually, do you actually play any of these games that you're in? i don't play any of these games because i don't have the system to play it on and mm. if i did i probably wouldn't do anything else right. um, um yeah um so yeah and the most recent thing i've done was um uh horizon forbidden west and horizon forbidden west burning shores um is it just, fun to do these like yeah, how um, um, how does the collaboration work do they know exactly what they want from you or do you kind of go in and just riff um it's a little bit of both i'm i think on some some games uh they they want both they'll say you know here's my melodies do this and then give send me some ad libs so I get this to do is, both. This is quite the resume. <laughs> that's a lot of that's a lot of games or uh, soundtrack work. I don't know if you can see this, right? Yeah, I can yeah. see that. Yeah. Masters of Horror. You you did something for that? Yeah, I actually sing in the episode. Theme. Oh the wow! Really? I have some of those yeah. on DVD. Yeah. Good stuff. Okay. Um, awesome. Bucketheads also on one of those songs, I think. <laughs> Oh, is it? I think okay. he's on the soundtrack somewhere, so you're probably on there with him. Oh, that's very cool. Um, yes, AC. Okay, uh, let's go back to the comments. Guy's favorite song is "Presumed Lost." Is there any story behind that? Um, yeah, I guess that's just about feeling dis disenfranchised and not, you know, when you move a lot, you want a home, you know. Mm. So I think it's just the the wanting of a home. I was just a singer, understatement of the century. Uh, people want the live Universal Hall Pass recording. Is there a possibility you'd you would? Yeah, that? I don't I don't mind putting that out. I yeah, I can it's, probably it's, uh, toss it up on SoundCloud. 
pretty awesome. Or Bandcamp, even. Sell that shit. <laughs> all right, all right. Can you Maybe. do that? I don't know. <laughs> Why not? I, I could split it up into tracks, <laughs> I'm sure. Um, hey, she's mysterious. Libra B. Is there, are you still in contact with uh, Adam? Yes, I am. We actually gotcha. just wrote a song together, so... Oh what are you yeah i okay you're blowing my mind that's awesome so that was my, my cryptic oops i don't know if i was supposed to say that I probably wasn't. i'm sorry oh, well. but yeah um my copies yeah. of these are are hand written because I, I actually had adam at some point sent me his remasters his own remasters of blue ships and possibilities oh wow um this was some years ago so maybe i could get him on this show at some point I know yeah. he was doing some kind of like horror punk band at the time. I think it was called Anarchy Club. Anarchy Club, yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know much about them. I, I mean, I've heard them. They're good. Yeah, I heard I some of the recordings. I don't know much about them. Titan AE, yes. Uh, people like their Titan AE. I've actually never seen the movie. Was it good? Yeah, it was really cute. I, I, thought, it was, I thought it was a good movie. Mm -hmm. So lucky they managed to get out. Yes. Um, 99 is when the Redshift EP was released in the first year of college. Awesome. That was a good, that was a good time. Uh, people would buy uh, the Blue Shift if it came out. They had Iron Spy on a CMJ compilation. That's cool. Yeah. Um, Melissa, I remember you had some cool shoes with monster teeth. Oh, God. Those are my skeleton boots. <laughs> nice. Did you like, do you like horror movies and stuff like that? I do, I like a good ghost story, but I'm not really a horror person. Does that do make like, sense? Do you like Phantom of the Opera? I'm not a really not huge really. fan of of musicals. Well, just the story in general, or the movie, the, you know, Lon Chaney. I guess not. <laughs> yeah, that's my no. other show is about Phantom of the Opera. I saw it in New York, um, but I I I sort of I liked musicals when I was little, and then I kind of outgrew them. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Rob Roberts just missed you guys at the Middle East because I was sick and had to leave. No. Oh no. I went there once. I think I saw a Suicide Girls show. I used to date a girl in Boston, so I would go up there. Oh. This was like in the mid two thousands. Um, okay. I think I was at the Middle East once. Yeah, it's a really cool place, the Middle East. Um. Did you? did you were you like a part of the boston scene for a while like when were you were you there for years after the band as well um i i think i spent 13 years altogether there but i was working on you on just recording universal hall pass mm -hmm. and then did i you, left yeah sorry go ahead for, oh uh for north carolina for eight months and then i wound up moving to los angeles okay did you overlap with the dresden dolls at all no, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. You're, you're, no, it's okay. I liked the Dresden Dolls, though. They were pretty cool. Well, Brian plays on a couple of tracks on my record. Welcome to my pity party. Available oh, on Bandcamp. very cool. He lives in That's LA awesome. now, too, though. So. And they're back together. I know they, they were like a Boston phenomenon. So Yeah. So it's hard for me that. to read some of the comments that are coming up. Was, I apologize. Right, I can read them to um, you. I wear glasses. Uh -huh. I'll be your eyes. It's cool. Uh -huh. Mercury and subtle things are a permanent part of my music playlists. I love cave radio so, so much. Yeah. I mean, Thank I, you. I probably listen to something you do at least once every couple of months, you know, for 20 years. Oh, wow. Well, thank you. Now there, there's new music coming. I know I say that all the time, but it, it uh, I usually 2006. It, it's been too it long. It usually comes. I know it usually comes out. It just uh, takes too much time, and I, I realize that. But it will come. Crickets. Yeah, that's one of the newer it, songs, right? Yeah, so that's very sad that um, uh, we, it's the passing of Astrid Gilba. Astrid Gilba. I can't say her name. Oh, Gilberto. I didn't. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. It was a cover, so, right? Yeah, the original girl from Ipanema. Her um, spine's conducting lightning. Yeah, where did that line come from? Did you write that one? Yeah, um, I did. Uh, that's from Iron Spy. Um, 
I it was just a visual of about um, anxiety, like how anxiety goes through the body. You were on a episode of Angel. Uh, we we Plus, are um, games. Be games you play was nice. um, on on an episode. I of watched Angel. I watched them all once, and I probably I've I've forgotten that, but I probably heard it, and I probably freaked out. Uh, Adam sent me the entire CVB catalog of music for my radio show. I think there are five Splashdown releases. So this is Guy. Can I reveal you? Guy was my college roommate that introduced me to Splashdown. Oh, who had that thank radio you, promo. Guy. <laughs> I've revealed you. I mean, you're revealing yourself, I think. it was. It's like, thank you so much. Uh, that was so cool. Uh, what about thank Dragonfly? You. Dragonfly. Dragonfly is about um, illusion and coming out of illusion into what's real. Mm -hmm. Every single song Melissa releases is like a life event in my family. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I remember Cass and tweeting that they were rehearsing together a bit, and that was less than 10 years ago. Were you guys oh, jamming together? Yeah, we, uh, we were going to do live show, and then I don't know. I can't remember what happened. This was Splashdown? You're going to do a reunion? Um, no, this was going to be for UHP. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And I think it was like a combination of UHP and Symbian Project. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he's got a lot of those Symbian Project records, huh? Yeah, I love working on stuff with him. The only thing I want Melissa to know is we have never stopped listening to your beautiful voice and we will continue to do so. You touch our hearts and we are so thankful for your music. Oh, thank you. You got fans. Thank you so yes. much. I'm a bit <laughs> late to the party, that. but I'd also like to express how awesome it is to hear about your projects, past, present, and future for someone who's been following you over the years. Thank you. Both. Yeah, and thank you. Let me let me finish with some overarching questions. Um what uh okay so i asked you what you think you were most known for and that's assassin's creed right yeah what do you feel is the most you is there a project that's just like the most you and it's probably universal hall pass yeah uhp is most me mm. i mean it is it's all me so um i think that that it's it's my own personal splashdown my own personal finding my mm -hmm. my voice i mean you're it's like you're always finding your voice in music so sure um do you how i guess collaborations like what's your philosophy on collaborations is it just hey whoever could pay me for my work or is there a creative aspect to it or is there a difference um, between the two for you if uh, lately it's been whoever can pay me for my for right. my work. Um, hey, yeah. I gotta make girls gotta make a living. Um, but actually, I it depends on what it is. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it it depends on on the style. If I fit the style, um, right. You know, it, it definitely depends on it. what it is. I I would I'll definitely you know be a little picky about what you know but usually it's uh it's collaborating um is usually these days a paid thing yeah because i i had i have such little time to do my own stuff that i would like to be able to focus on that sure um has anybody ever covered any of your songs in any of your projects um probably i i think so um so i, I don't i've never heard of any i don't think so if anyone knows of any i think um the girl from map and key uh which was adam's band covered a couple of splashdown songs hmm. online on youtube okay it's a pretty 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 nice job um Ellie was wondering about Mayan Pilot. Oh, Mayan Pilot. 
Oh my gosh. I don't remember what that song was about. <laughs> I That's apologize. Fair. Yeah, that was hey. so long ago. Yeah. Um, I, did I you, think it's about doing the impossible. Did you collaborate with um, Cynthia on anything else? you know that we missed and were you did you have anything to do with this contest project um i don't think so i think crash my car was the last song that i did with her that was on one of these compilations right here's the other one i don't know if you're on nye but i have nye as well yeah i am on nye yeah, that's what and, flashed down oh okay and then i don't know what about soon um this was maybe a little bit before you yeah i think that was Symbian before projects me. on here though yeah so cast around those are all my props. yeah is there anything else you want the world to know about you and your career and how, how do you i guess here's my here's my last question um how do you feel about the legacy of splashdown is there a legacy of splashdown um well, I think the legacy stays alive through the people who listen to it. I mean, you guys mm -hmm. have, all the listeners have kept that alive, and I'm thankful for that because we put our heart and souls into it, and it really means the world to me that that you guys are so hardcore about it. Here's some of your scrapbook while you're talking, right? Oh, yeah. Anon, here's Anon. I think that Hi. some one of those my my uh, contract for CVV. Yeah, there's a studio contract or a session contract. Yeah. Um, was there any bands that you played with in Splashdown that was like holy crap? <laughs> um. Oh my gosh, we opened for Moby. Okay. Yeah, he exciting. was really big at the time, huh? Yeah, that was that was pretty awesome. Did anybody um, from any of these compilations go on to do anything else that that we might know about? Um, I don't know, about? know. I have no clue. Gotcha. There's too many of them. I just find them like as an sort of like a from an anthropology standpoint, like it's an interesting. It's just like a collection of of a scene or you know a, st a stamp in time for a scene it seems like yeah yeah but i, I think some of the stuff on there is still still sounds pretty relevant yeah yeah i listened to most of it i forgot one of them was double disc so i only listened to the first one the other day but i'll have to put in the second disc oh um someone i think is asking what elvis sunday yes, is about elvis sunday um elvis anyway. sunday was about um uh uh, a house that I lived on, um, uh, lived on, lived in, um, when I was a child. And then when I was about 11, we moved and it was about, um, always missing that, that house, hmm. like not having the choice to leave because I was young. Well, I think we did it, Melissa. What do you I think? Know. I Thank think you. so. I think we did. I know I, I kept you a little bit past your bedtime, but I'm hope, hoping it That's was worth fine. it. I know I had to get all this out of me. So I've been wondering <laughs> about all these things for 20 years. I hope I, I hope it was satisfying. It was very satisfying. I, I'm so happy that you agreed to do this and, and that the you. world can hear these stories because there's not much out there, at least, you know, past doing press at the current time of the band there's not much out there about splashdown yeah no i hope i hope so and i'm really grateful that you had me on and i really appreciate it thank you so much thank and i'll you. check I out guess... some of your stuff too yeah yeah by all means um i don't have enough stuff out there as as much as i should because i have been doing music for like 20 years too but i have like two albums out it's crazy i need to catch up on it it's all there right. it exists uh, let me promote the upcoming shows. I, hey, do you... I, I, I don't have your CD to wave in your face and say right. 2006. <laughs> I know, I know. Trust me, it's coming. Do you like industrial music? Because my next guest is Gravity Kills. I do like Kills. some industrial music, actually. Do you remember Gravity Kills? I don't, but I will oh, check them they out. Were, they were on MTV all the time in like okay. 1996. 
I didn't grow up with MTV, unfortunately. Yeah, fair enough. Well, then that's how you missed Gravity Kills. Yeah. And you guys, if you see any artists, like just check out my show. If you even if you haven't heard of any of these artists, Final Girls Metal Band with uh, teenage girls from New Jersey, we're gonna find out if the youth are assholes or not. Um, <laughs> you know, like Melissa, they all have a very interesting story, even if you don't know who they are yet. Let me be my vessel to to introduce you to some people like Negative Hate. Don't you want to know the story behind Negative Hate? They've been a band for, I think, over 30 years now. Can you believe it? Uh, <laughs> goth DJ, DJ Templar is going to be on the show. I uh, do photos for his party red party every month now. If you're in New York and you like a good post-punk goth party this is the one to go to uh, zora from religious to damn and Ezra swan i just filmed her show she played with one of her collaborators lydia lunch it was thrilling uh lydia lunch punk icon of course tibby x a friend of mine for 15 years is going to be on the show she's in reagan youth and a bunch of other bands guys just stick with me i swear the show will be interesting and of course, go check out my stuff uh, musically, and there's going to be a lot more coming. I think that's it. I think that's all my the stuff that I had to say. All right. Well, uh, it was wonderful speaking with you. And there's one more person I wanted to mention. Um, sure. I also am collaborating with Tom Toomey, who is um, the guitarist from the Zombies, the Legendary Zombies. Oh, cool. So, so there's some things on the horizon. Yeah, so there's some things coming on the horizon. It's so. incredible. Well, when, mm -hmm. they're, when they're here, I will tell the people about it. Um, I'm Thank just, you so I'm much. so thankful for you and your music and Blue Shift, the best album never released. Is that, <laughs> do you feel like that is a statement I can say? Because I've been yeah. saying it for years. Well, I'm biased, so of course. <laughs> I'm not. I mean, I guess I am, but seriously, it's like such a gold, like someone really messed that one up. Like you, it should have been huge. That's my um, opinion. I, 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 I. Well, and it's so unique. Like, there's no band that sounds like Splashdown. At least, at least it's out there. It's out there. Yeah, you can go find it. But let's get that vinyl one day. Somebody, somebody pressured Capitol Records to get that stuff on Spotify. At least. Sorry, my, someone was trying to call me. Oh yeah, no problem. I'm just saying, get it on Spotify. Capitol Records. Come on, there's a demand for it. I know. I that I that would be nice. But the, that we we need to get all three of our heads together to yeah to do that but um but there is there are, there will be some surprises this year musically so awesome this is yeah. this is very exciting for me um and the fans thank you so much come back next week for gravity kills i think it's next week i we will do this I every will. two weeks but uh I'll give them a listen. it's my summer vacation so the schedule might be a little wonky just oh. go to my instagram oh where, where can people going? follow you Oh, Are you going I, it's just the nature of the job I have. I don't work during the summer. I mean, I freelance oh, gotcha. and everything, but um, I kind of have some free time on my hands. Oh, good for you. There's going to be a lot of music making. It's, that's okay. my main focus for the next few months is making awesome. music. So well, if you, got any, you or anyone in the chat and got any songs for me to remix, like send them to me. And if you need uh -huh. a bass part or some, th some kind of creative collaboration, I'm down. Let's do it. Well, thank you so much, Kevin. It's wonderful meeting you. And yes. I hope that we'll meet again. I hope so, too. Hey, if you want to do a photo shoot with all your old clothing, I'm not that far away. <laughs> I don't and, know. And if you want to transfer any of your tapes and put those on, up on Bandcamp, like, I'm your guy. All right. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. That's you Melissa evening. Kaplan. I will see you next time on Von Pod. Thank you. And. And now, a word from our sponsors.
writing hits. Comment below! Comment below! Comment below! Yeah.